What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Phil Porto, photographer, videographer, and educator, and I'm back with a new episode. And today, what I want to talk about is how to capture the most epic sparkler exit. Do I use a flash? No. No, 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 no. I No. The answer is no. If you use a flash while capturing a sparkler exit, take my advice. Stop. Do not use a flash, okay? I'm not trying to knock you if you're one of those people that do, but no, I do not agree with it. I am truly against using the flash for an exit, okay? And here's why. First, it ruins the ambiance. Okay, the whole point of a sparkler exit is to show that it's at night and that it's late and that the party finished and that they're still gonna go and enjoy themselves and they're being wished off with all these little like sparklers and fire and stuff like that. And it's cool and it's awesome. And you want that dark feel, you want the orange to be highlighted in the sparklers and the light and whatnot. So you do not want to ruin that with flash, okay? That completely changes the environment and look to look like something that it's not. So I would say, no, it ruins the ambiance. Second, um, the flash can be hit or miss. And you don't want that in something like a sparkler exit. It happens so quick. It's not something you can really recreate. I mean, if the sparklers are long enough, you can have the couple go back and forth, um, which we do a lot, but you can't recreate that first walking down, saying goodbye to everybody. So make sure you don't rely on something that's going to be hit or miss. Like, especially on something that's quick movement. Like what if the camera all of a sudden with the flash, they don't speak to each other perfectly at that moment. You don't wanna risk that. You don't wanna like have to miss those kind of moments. So no, I do not use a flash because of that reason as well. Third, as someone who does video, one thing I hated back in the day was editing my sparkler exit and seeing all this like nonstop multi-flash click, 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 like ruining the actual moment for me as a videographer. So do the videographer a favor and don't do that. That's just not cool. Like be mindful of their art form as well and realize that that's just not a good look. So no, for that reason as well. Fourth, the flash stops motion. And I'm not trying to do that when it comes to a sparkler exit. I wanna see in each photo a different variation of the flash moving and going off. Like that's the beauty of a sparkler exit. So no, do not use flash for that reason as well. And to wrap it up, my fifth reason, don't use flash. That's it, bottom line. I don't need another reason except for the fact that you should not use flash for a sparkler exit, okay? Cool, now that I got that out of my system, we can move on. So how do I take photos like these, okay? How do I capture really cool sparkler exits? It's easy, it's really, really easy. And it's a video light, okay? So something like this, I'm unprepared so I didn't bring the, the battery, but something like this attached to your camera is beautiful, okay? Or different size, something like this, okay? Um, cool little light. You can change the white balance and everything like that. My favorite lights that I've ever used for something like a sparkler exit are the Aperture lights. These are both Aperture lights, um, and that's the company A-P-U-T-U-R-E. Um, but any video LED light where you can change the, the um, amount of brightness as well as the uh, color temperature could really, really work. And so why do I use those lights? Well. We'll start with point number one. Um, it keeps you from having to shoot it at too high of an ISO and the image starting to get really, really grainy um, and isn't really usable anyway. Like it's just not a pretty image when you see someone that had to shoot a sparkler exit at such a high ISO. So this kind of prevents you from having to do that. Um, second, it keeps you from having to shoot at a shutter speed that is too low that might get some of the movement of the couple out of focus. So you don't know how fast a couple is going to go, okay? Especially at the end of the night, they might've hung out with Mr. Fireball for a little bit too long and the sparkler exit could be like that. 
And so you want to make sure that you're not relying on something like slow motion to get a good image. So I typically shoot at about 320, um, maybe a little bit higher depending on what I think is going to happen with the couple, but it allows me to shoot at shutter speed that doesn't um, risk getting things out of focus and blurry. I want sharp, really, really cool images for my sparkler exit. The third, it keeps you from having to shoot at such a high aperture. Um, for me, I usually shoot at around 2.8 because I don't really care about like depth of field when it comes to um, a, a sparkler exit. I want to make sure things are in focus, but I also don't want to like be uh, so high in aperture that just everything's in focus and I can't really focus on my couple. And lastly, if you're working with a videographer, this is something that is actually beneficial to them too because they use that in their videos. And like I said previously, they don't want a ton of flash going off in the images, uh, in, in their video content. So this is something that works for both of you and it kind of just makes the, the working environment that much easier. Now we'll talk about how I capture the exit. First, I educate the couple, okay? So I go up to the couple beforehand and I'm like, listen, this is the end of your night have fun with it. You know, you don't have to rush. You can run if you want to, but if you don't, you don't have to like take your time, enjoy the moment, celebrate, scream your freaking heads off, like throw your hands in the air, do whatever you want. If you want, stop in the middle, kiss, enjoy yourself, take your time and enjoy this moment. And it allows them to then go into the sparkler exit, kind of knowing how to walk together instead of one being in front of the other and not being able to really see the other person. And it kind of just helps them kind of feel like you were with them, walking them step by step throughout the whole day, not just, hey, we got to the reception, now you're on your own. Then I change my settings on my camera. So when I'm at a reception, I'm using flash. So I turn off the preview slash white balance so that I can actually see, you know, the, the end product of, of the image instead of like seeing a black screen. So now I'm not using a flash. I want to make sure that I put the preview and exposure back on so that when the couple's coming down, I can actually see what my image is going to truly look like. Then I make sure that my camera is moved to continuous shooting. I want to make sure that it's nonstop continuous focus. And then I want to make sure it's in burst mode. This is the one time that I encourage machine gun shooting because it's a quick, quick thing. And you want to make sure that you capture every moment of that celebration. And then I put on zone tracking. That's for Fuji. I don't know what it's called for every other camera. Sometimes it's sport tracking or something like that. Um, but just to make sure that it can select a few multiple points and then I keep that small to stay on the couple, but that as they're moving, my zone track is keeping up with them. Then my camera settings. Like I said earlier, my shutter speed is usually around 320 to make sure that everything that's happening is in focus. If they walk a little faster or if they run a little bit, things aren't going to be blurry and muddled. I want to make sure they're crisp, sharp images. Then what I want to do is make sure that my aperture is at around 2.8. Like I said before, don't care about depth of field. It's just not something that matters for that. I want to make sure things are in focus and that nothing is blurry and that the couple is the main focus. Then my ISO, that's going to kind of vary based off of my other settings and also how bright these things are. Um, I don't want to set a certain number because it's going to be different, especially with different lights that might be outside. If there's hanging lights or if there's street lights or anything like that, that's going to change my ISO. Um, but I want to make sure that I personally, I don't go past 3200 because I don't want to leave room for the image to get uh, too grainy or too muddled. Then I usually have a diffuser for this little guy to make sure that the couple's not completely blinded and that my light is soft and not harsh on the couple. So it's not rocket science. It's just a matter of applying these principles to make sure that your sparkler exit is awesome. So if this is not how you shoot your sparkler exits, Give this a shot in your next wedding. If you have any questions or concerns, hit me up in the comments. If this is how you shoot your sparkler exits, I tip my hat to you and I'm not that original. Cool. I'm not trying to say I created or invented this. Like this is just how I personally, as a photographer who also does video, found is best to capture sparkler exits. So thank you guys again for rocking with me. And until next time, ow, just hit my hand on the freaking desk. Anyway, until next time, God bless.